You're listening to the Mind Your Business Podcast, episode number 22. Today, we're talking to the man behind social triggers, Derek Halpern, about the seemingly unremarkable daily habits that help people become extraordinary in business, and more specifically, how walking can change your life. So, stay tuned. Hi, I'm James Wedmore, and I've built a seven-figure internet business that offers the financial freedom to do what I want, when I want. And I'm the first to say that hard work and hustle are not essential ingredients for your success. So how do you build a thriving business from the inside out? This is the Mind Your Business podcast, featuring myself and co-host, Phoebe Morocek. All right, welcome to the show. James Wedmore here. And I'm Phoebe Morocek. And I am so excited for today's episode. So the first thing we want you to do before we get into any of it is go make sure you're listening to this on your smartphone, your mobile device, grab the headphones, and let's go for a walk. Now, here's why. We just got off the call with someone who's been a very good friend of mine for a very long time, Mr. Derek Halpern. He's the man behind Social Triggers. And believe it or not, we weren't talking about anything that had to do with copywriting, influence, blogging, video, or anything like that. And that's why I really wanted to have Derek on the show because, you know, here we are. This is the 22nd episode of our podcast. We started this. We launched it in January of 2016. And Phoebe and I, we really came from a mission of sharing the unseen, the unspoken variables and factors that make up successful business owners and entrepreneurs. So we've talked about a lot of stuff like overcoming our fears, what to do when we don't have the motivation to do the work or even get out of bed in the morning, how to deal with a lack of self-worth and confidence. And we've even taken you down the woo-woo trail a bit, haven't we? Talked about some things like law of attraction and feng shui. So the reason I'm so excited about this episode is because here we are talking to like Mr. New York City entrepreneur himself, the loud mouth, loud talking Derek Halpern. And he even says on this call, he's like, I hate that woo woo stuff. However, he himself admits that it's not all about split tests and conversion rates and working harder and working longer. This is an episode where Derek himself will make a case in order to prove that these seemingly unremarkable daily habits will help people become extraordinary in business. And one of those daily habits, the one that we'll be talking about, is walking. So most of our listeners probably know who Derek Halpern is, but we did want to give you a little bit more of a bio about him so you know who you're listening to on this episode. Derek Halpern is the founder of socialtriggers.com. He's built a thriving business that sells software, online courses, and digital training. He's been featured in Forbes, Inc., Entrepreneur, Huffington Post, and he's seen as one of the most influential leaders today in online marketing, social media, and online buying behavior. All right, so let's get into the episode. All right, welcome to the show. I have got the one and only, the man, the myth, the legend, Derek Halpern of Social Triggers on the line. Derek, are you there? Dude, I'm here and I'm pumped to be here because this is actually the first time I've done a podcast in probably two years. So I'm excited. Two years. So we're pretty honored to have you. So thank you for being here. Dude, thanks for having me. Okay. So I get an email in my inbox the other day and, you know, like a good copywriter, it got my attention. And all of a sudden you're talking about walking (laughs) and you've got, I mean, beautiful branding, all this exciting thing for a really simple thing, seven day walking challenge. So I had to have a conversation with you and I'm so glad we get to talk about this. So I want to just ask this first question. Why is social triggers doing a walking challenge? Dude, I love that you're asking this question because a lot of people have reached out to me and they're like, yo, Derek, you're not running a fitness site. And there was one person that even wrote on my Facebook page This feels off brand. What's going on? And, you know, if you look at the world's most successful entrepreneurs, you're going to notice that they have a lot of their areas of life put together. And this was interesting to me because I believe there's a myth that people who succeed often do it at the expense of something else in their life. 
They believe this myth because it makes us feel better about ourselves. They say things like, oh, I didn't get promoted because I have a family or I couldn't build my business like they did because I have a volunteer thing that I do. And they make these excuses up. And this is interesting to me because I believe this couldn't be further from the truth. And as I met more and more successful people, I started to notice that they had the full package. They have a beautiful family, a remarkable business, and it almost seems like they have a perfect life. They're fit, they're focused, they're financially successful, and I hate them for it. (laughs) Those bastards. seeing their success proves to me one thing. It's possible to have it all. Mm. And that was enough for me to make me want to pursue it, right? And I know you're asking me why I'm doing walking, why this matters, but I see these people doing all these things right. And fitness and being healthy, that's one of those areas. And walking is one of the ways to do it. And it's a way that rings home with me personally. So that's like why I did this challenge. Yeah, I love that. Is this something that has recently started or you're just over time you've been seeing people with these wonderful lives and you've always felt this way that fitness was an area in which maybe you wanted to kind of veer in that direction or did this just recently come about? It's funny that you asked that because I wish I could say I was smart enough to think of this myself, but I would be lying to you. What ended up happening was for the last year and about four months, I've been walking about 10,000 steps a day or more. There was about like a two month span where I kind of fell out of it because, you know, you do things and you kind of fall out of it. It was like 10 degrees outside in New York City. I'm not going outside. I'm not walking anywhere. I'm not even putting my shoes on on that day. But (laughs) there was a time where I didn't do it. But the reason why this started is because in 2014, I got really unfortunate news from my doctor and he told me I had a heart condition. And luckily, it was nothing like I did to myself. Like I wasn't like a complete when I was eating food or whatever. But he was like, you were born with this arrhythmia. And he goes, there's two things you can do. You can like go get a heart procedure, which I did. And it was successful, which is great. And I'm super thankful that I had a successful procedure. But he also said, you have to live a heart healthy life. And one of the factors in this heart healthy life was walking more. I'll never forget what he did because I actually wrote about this just recently, but this is a true story. He literally tells me I'm in the doctor's office. He says, hey, Derek, you use an iPhone? And I'm like, yeah, I use an iPhone. He goes, let me see it for a second. I hand him my iPhone. He goes, oh, it's locked. Can you unlock it? He does some things on the iPhone. He pulls up this app and all of a sudden he goes, hey, do you walk a lot? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I walk a lot. I walk to the coffee shop. You know, I do this. (laughs) He goes, look, you're only getting 2,000 steps a day. You need about 10,000. You have a heart problem. 10,000 steps is what people want to hit. And I'm like sitting here thinking like, how do you know that? He goes, oh, you have an app on your phone that tracks all of it. Busted. I was like, yo, I got busted. That's exactly- <laughs> he snatched my phone out of my hands, pulled up the facts, and I wanted to be like, oh, I don't always carry my phone with me. What now? But that was like a lie, so I couldn't even say that. But <laughs> So you started walking those 10,000 steps. Yeah, so he basically told me I had to start walking. I started Googling more about it, and that's when I started to realize that walking is interesting because, yeah... I mean, look, I'm not a doctor, so I can't be telling you, hey, you should go walk to be healthy. Like you should go talk to your own doctor to figure that out. But my doctor said that walking is important. I Google it. Other doctors said that walking is important. And then when I Googled it even further, I started to realize that there's this amazing side effects that happen when you walk. People are more focused. They get more energy. They feel better about themselves. They're happier. They're healthier. And they're coming up with more ideas. And then I started to read about that. And that was interesting to me because here I am. I'm a business owner. I always thought that business was about split testing and lead generation and making great videos. And then here I'm learning that if you want to come up with better ideas, you come up with the best ideas when you go for a walk. You want to be more creative. You go for a walk. You want to make more meaningful connections. You go for a walk. And I'm sitting here thinking, like, why didn't anyone tell me this before? So I started walking and I started to realize all those benefits. And I got to say, it's been amazing. It's been life changing for the last year. And that's why I created this walking challenge. It's like, why should I keep this to myself? Mm. That's the bottom line. Got it. So this is, this is about a year and a half ago that a lot of this started? Yes. Okay. So what would you say are some of the biggest or even the smallest like but significant results that you've seen from adding walking into your daily routine? Dude, where do I start? Let me tell you, I had like just a few weeks ago, I was having a real stressful day. 
this wasn't going right. Things were going wrong. People were pissing me off. Everyone was stressing me out. <laughs> For you, no. <laughs> hey. <laughs> This isn't a joke. <laughs> no, no. So, so I was having a bad day. And at that exact moment, a lot of people would think like, oh, you know, let me go have a glass of wine or let me go do this. Da, da, da. I chose to go on a walk. And what was interesting was I went for a walk in Central Park. I live about a block away from Central Park in New York City. I went on a walk. And during that walk, I started to see some interesting things. I started to see, you know, people on dates started to see people exercising, started to see people just having a good time. And while walking, I didn't bring my phone with me because a lot of people go on walks and they're like, oh, let's listen to an audio book. And sometimes I do that. But this particular walk, I was by myself and I was just focused on what was happening around me. And taking that in, as weird as this may sound, I mean, I'm like a results guy. I hate that woo stuff. And just taking that stuff in made me get a different type of perspective on my day. And I remember at that exact moment, I felt better about what was happening. I was having a bad day, but I went on a walk, taking in the fresh air, seeing all these other things happening, walking past a couple that was on a date. They're laughing with each other. You start thinking, yo, life isn't that bad. Yeah, you're having a bad day right now, but look around. You're having a good time. Mm. And that was just recently that I noticed this exact benefit. Another time was not necessarily only for a stressful reason, but I was actually doing a sales letter for a product that I was releasing. And I came up to a point where I just couldn't come up with any new ideas. I mean, you've probably been in this situation, James, where you're like, you're sitting back, you're like, ah, I can't come up with anything. What do I do? And you start like stressing out. You start writing more and more and more and more. And before you know it, everything you're writing is garbage. And then you realize you have to just take a step back from the computer and go analog. And I went on that analog walk where I just kind of walked through, watched the surroundings, took a second to just take some more time with myself. And I came back and I got the hook that I was looking for. Mm. You know what I mean? Like they always say your best ideas come to you in the shower. And the reason why is because you take your mind off of the thing that you're trying to solve. And all these things happen in the background that make you come up with that new idea. So I think taking a walk is very similar to taking a shower in that you take your mind off what you're trying to think about and it allows you to create that new creative connection. So if we had to create a theory behind this, is that your theory is that walking creates the opportunity to just take your mind off of the problem that you're stuck on right now? Yes. I mean, that's exactly it. I want to quote the book by Jonah Lehrer, but the problem is Jonah Lehrer was recent, like he was shamed for like making up some quotes or whatever, but his book was still good. And it was about the science of creativity. And they actually talk about that exact thing about why people come up with great ideas in the showers because they're not thinking about the problem anymore. And they accidentally come up with the idea. I think walking specifically walking in new surroundings kind of assaults your senses with new information. Like I said, you'll see those people on a date. You'll see those people exercising. You'll see those people laying on the grass. You'll see those people doing this. And all that new information creates like these new things that are happening in your head that create that new idea. So I think that's the theory that I have. I love it. So we actually did a little bit of research on the act of walking. And there was something by some doctoral graduates of Stanford. And they said that... Well, they basically had this study where there were students or people in this study that were walking on a treadmill facing a blank wall. And then there were people who were walking outside. They came back and tested the actual creativity from both of them. And they said that they didn't actually matter if they were indoors or outdoors. And they similarly boosted creative inspiration in the same exact way. So do you... That's interesting. So basically, I mean, this is the Stanford study, right? Yes. Yeah. So the Stanford study is that... I know why they tested that, right? Because they want to know, is it the fact that you're walking outside creating the creative connections or is it the fact that you're walking, period, that's creating it? And this study says if you're walking in a blank room, whether you're outside or not, you're coming up with better ideas than when you're not walking, right? Yep, that's right. Yeah, so they're trying to say walking is the answer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I want to agree with that. I think walking is the answer, but I have to tell you something. I'm not about to get a treadmill desk. (laughs) Yeah, because you're still working while you're walking. Dude, I'm not going to do it. Like, I hear these people having stand-up desks, and I hate them. (laughs) I hate them in their perfect lives. (laughs) No, like, stand-up desks, like, I'm never going to stand up. I like to put my leg on my desk and, like, be all contorted, which is, like, probably my doctor's least favorite thing to do, but that's how I like to work. 
I'm like one of those guys where I want my work life to be my work life and I want my home life and creative life to be my creative life. And I'm not trying to combine the two. But I will say, while I won't use a walking treadmill desk and I won't use a standing desk, and I'm probably not going to walk facing a blank wall because I'm probably going to purposely trip and hit my head against the wall just so I can forget that I'm doing that. But I'm going for a walk outside and it's been amazing. Whether it's walking or the outside, I'm happy about it. Okay, so here's my question now for you, Derek, because we've got the studies. We found so much research, and I know you have, that yep. proves the significance, the impact of walking. They can have it on areas of our life from creativity to health and energy, vitality, but also the real results that you've seen even just on a day-by-day basis. So with all this information that you have, what plan does that create for you? Like what kind of routine does that create for you? How do you create that into your life on a daily basis? So like most people who hear about the idea of walking 10,000 steps, they immediately start thinking like, who has time for that? 10,000 steps, that's like five miles. How am I going to add five miles into my life? Now, if you actually look at the research, most people on average get about three to 4,000 steps a day. Unless you're Amish, they get much more than that <laughs> because Amish people don't like you know technology. But most people only do three to 4,000 steps. So how do you work walking into a schedule that's already busy? And I could just tell you what I did personally. The first thing that I, like I said, I already know the benefits of walking. I have to do it because I believe it's healthy and all this stuff. And I know all these side effects of walking, the creativity, the health, et cetera. How do you do it without it impacting your life? Well, I believe if you want to change your behavior, the best way to do it is to find something you're already doing and modify that slightly. As an example, when I wanted to quit drinking Coca-Cola, I love Coca-Cola more than anything in the world. I used to drink like five cans a day. I don't drink five cans a day anymore. How did I do it? I replaced Coca-Cola with sparkling water, and that was enough for me to like replace my habit. With walking, the same is true. I noticed that when I woke up in the morning, I would walk across the street to get a cappuccino from my favorite coffee shop. I decided instead of going to that coffee shop across the street to go to the coffee shop that was six or seven blocks away. Now I have a nice short five to 10 minute walk to get my coffee, get my coffee, I have a five to 10 minute walk back home. And now all of a sudden I go from walking a half a block, which might be 500 steps to walking 14 blocks, which might be 1500 steps, right? Yeah. So I believe if you want to start walking, it's not about making time to walk because you might not have the time, but it's about finding things that you're already doing and increasing the walking ability. And I know a lot of people say this, but like you can go to a supermarket. Don't find the closest parking spot. Park the furthest that you can from the door. I know it's going to suck when you have a lot of groceries in your hands, but you know what? It's going to get your walking in. And it's only a few minutes and you're not going out of your way to walk more. You're just doing what you always do. You're just parking a little bit further. The same is true with if you go get the coffee like I was doing. Go to the coffee shop that's a little bit further away. If you're going for lunch with some colleagues, go to the lunch place that's eight blocks away, not four blocks away. Yeah, you might not be able to eat for a full hour this time. Eat for 45 minutes. Walk for 15. Another thing is, it's like just making sure you make the time to remember to stand up. Most people go to work, they sit in their chair from 8 a.m. to noon, go to lunch, come back at 1, sit in their chair from 1 to 5, then they go home. Set an alarm on your phone to go off every 45 minutes. Go take a pee break. (laughs) Go get a glass of water. You know what I mean? Yeah, actually, one thing that I found absolutely staggering when I was doing my research was a study from the University of Utah, and they said that if you just walk for two minutes per hour every day, you can reduce your premature death by 33%. And when I was reading, it was like, yeah, just get up and go to the bathroom. You should be drinking enough water that you should have to go to the bathroom that often. And I find that so mind boggling that it's just two minutes an hour every day. Yeah. And what's interesting about those numbers, if you actually look at my walking challenge that I'm doing, I'm trying to refrain from citing that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why. I'm not citing it because I'm lazy. I've got a whole team of people that have put this together for me. So it's not like I'm trying to not do work. The reason why I don't cite it is because that almost sounds too good to be true. It's kind of like why I sell a course. I'm going to tell you how to make $10,000. I'm not going to tell you how to make a million dollars because people who aren't even making $5 aren't going to think they can make a million dollars. They think they can make 10,000. You know what I mean? So like when when, when you hear a thing like two minutes an hour, it's like, nah, that's not really true. That's just some (laughs) like science people in the lab making up again. 
So I try to not even make those big promises, but I try to show people that it's easy to walk more and it could be beneficial. Well, listen, let's talk about the challenge right now, because obviously like for, you know, most people, they know how to walk. It's almost just like creating accountability for them to actually do it. Right. So can you tell us a little bit about what can we expect from this challenge? Yeah, the only thing I can say right now is the Mayo Clinic suggests you want to hit about 10,000 steps a day, right? That's the number that they hit. Mm -hmm. But if you go to someone who isn't even walking eight steps a day and you tell them to hit 10,000, their first reaction is like, ah, I remember my first reaction. I'll never forget this. He grabbed my phone. Like I said earlier, he grabbed my phone. He goes, oh, you do no steps. You got to get 10,000. I'm looking at him and I literally say out loud, I was like, I hope it's 10,000 steps from my bed to my computer or I'm screwed. (laughs) You know what I mean? I work from home. So he's like laughing. He goes, yeah. He goes, but you got to do this. And I'm like sitting here thinking like, you know, how am I going to go from nothing to something? The challenge is designed to help you walk more without overwhelming you. So it's not like on day one, I'm going to tell you, hey, 10,000 steps, go walk around the block 400 times. I'm not going to do that. It's all about setting small goals for you to walk more. So as an example, you know, on day one, we're going to tell you to set an alarm to walk a little bit more every 45 minutes. Like, cause you know, the study suggests if you walk two minutes an hour. So day one is all about setting an alarm to remind you to get up and walk every hour. We actually talk about that study. So we give you the easy steps you can implement to start walking more as opposed to telling you, Hey, you need to hit 10,000 steps a day. Go do it. You know what I mean? We show you how to reach those steps. Does that make sense? Yes. I like that. I think that's really cool. So you mentioned the app for iPhone users. Do you have any other resource or is that what you recommend? Like just, it's just an iPhone app or a smartphone app that makes the, I mean, we don't need like a pedometer anymore or anything like that. Is that, <laughs> is that old school stuff? Well, I mean, there's things like Fitbits and everything like that, and they're more accurate. But, you know, people always obsess over accuracy when they're trying to do something. But if you're currently walking 2,000 steps a day, you're trying to hit 10,000, guess what? The 5 or 10% error margin on your phone is not going to get you another 8,000 steps. Right. you got to just go walk a little bit. So I always try to make things as easy as possible. With the iPhone, there's the health app, and the health app automatically tracks your steps and your flights. I'm sure Android has a similar app. I'm not familiar with what the name of that app is. But... It's about just using what's easier and being okay with the fact that the app on your phone is not going to be as accurate as something like a Fitbit or a pedometer, as you were saying, but it's more accurate than not looking at it. Got it. Yeah, right? totally makes sense. And I'm always a firm believer, you know, even in business, I do the same exact thing. To get to 85% accuracy on like a split test, let's say, it might cost me $1,000 or Mm $2,000. To get to 99.9% accuracy on a split test, it's going to cost me $500,000. So at what point do you say, is 10,000 enough? Is 20,000? Like, you know, at how much money are you going to spend for accuracy, right? The more accurate you want to be, the more money it's going to cost. Or you can just realize that if you're currently doing zero, something is better than nothing. Let's focus on that app on your phone. That may not be perfect, but it's good enough for the fact that you're currently doing zero. Let's do something. Does that make sense? It does. And man, I just got to say, I love this because I have this great story of you from, I think it was back in 2012, where you, Lewis Howes, and I were doing the Creative Live show. Do you remember that? I do. And to kick off the show, Lewis had each of us share like what the results are in our life like, and why we love our businesses and running an online business out of our homes. And yeah. Lewis is talking about, I get to travel the world and meet new and interesting people. And then I go and I'm sitting there saying, you know, no one gets to tell me what to do anymore. I'm my own boss. And then you go and your answer was just like so amazing. You're like, I don't have to ever leave the house. <laughs> And I just died because like everyone in the audience was like, yeah, that's so me. And then you come, I don't ever want to leave the house. And everyone yep. was like, oh, okay, well, you know, to each their own. So in that regard, it's really great to see that you're doing this. But this is also something that really isn't aligned with our message. And it's so exciting to see you with such a thriving business and, you know, not ever talking about stuff like this and sharing that you are. I really think 
it's important and we wanted to get you on here as quickly as we could so we could push our listeners and my audience to your challenge. So guys, I've created a link. It's jameswedmore.com forward slash walking. There's no affiliate link. This is a free challenge that Derek and the Social Triggers team is doing. I so endorse this. I think this is going to be fantastic. And I think people are going to be able to see a profound difference in a very short amount of time. I was actually really proud. I'm going to be a little braggadocious right here, but I was looking at my little app that Derek was like, dude, yeah, you got the app on your phone. You can check. I'm like 9,000 average steps a day already. So I'm feeling good. I really want to double that. And Phoebe's like yeah. rolling her eyes at me right now because we know what her number is or I know what her number is. And but hold on. I will say I've been really good because since I moved to San Francisco, I go on walks all the time, but I have started to leave my phone at home. Yeah, so sure. it's not accurate, but I'll say I do walk a lot. I walk all over the place and I'm definitely walking at least once a day. So I've incorporated it more into like my phone calls. So when I have a yeah. phone call with someone and I know it's going to be a long call, I just go outside and I walk yeah. around my neighborhood. So while I was at about, I think my average was like 5,600, I would like to say it's more like probably 10,000, something like that. <laughs> we'll <laughs> Let's see. just say that I'm at the level I'm supposed to be at. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so let me ask you this, Derek, is there anything else that you need to share or say in order to call this episode complete for you? The only thing I have to say is that one of the things that I've realized in my life is that for the last five years, as you know, I started as a small little blog and I turned Social Triggers into a very large company. We sell software, we sell online products. We've got 20 people working for us. You know, we have a lot of people working really between contractors and full-time employees. And the thing that I've learned is I used to be obsessed about things like lead generation and split testing and all these fun things related to business. But as I got more successful, I started to realize that it's these little seemingly insignificant things that set people apart from being just normal and being the exception. And these little things are as small as something like going for a walk. This is something, you know, Beethoven, one of the world's most renowned composers, he spent his afternoons taking a walk. We've got the three times New York Times bestselling author Tim Ferriss. He talks about how a 10 to 20 minute walk is better than a handful of Prozac. Or we got like Nassim Tlaib who wrote the remarkable book Black Swan who – Essentially, if you're ever thinking about investing in something, Black Swan is the manual for it. He believes that walking is one of the first steps to curing writer's block. And you have like the LinkedIn CEO, Jeff, J Jeff Weiner, where he's like, it's energizing to get outside for a 30-minute walk a few times a day. Like all these people, all these successful people are going for walks. And if something as small as going for a walk can help so many different successful people, why aren't you doing it? Mm. That's the thing I want to leave with. There's a lot of people like me, like you said, when I first started this business, I openly bragged about how I never left the house. And you know what? I kind of still appreciate that. <laughs> I like not leaving the house. But then you gain 15 pounds. And then you find out you have a heart condition. And then you find out that your doctor's yelling at you because he's like, hey, man, it looks like you walk about eight steps a day. And then all of a sudden you start realizing like life is more than just building and working all the time. And what's funny is, is when I started to focus on this walking, I actually went on to see business results. So this might seem insignificant in the grand scheme of things, especially when you're thinking like, oh, you want me to go on a walk? I still need to get my first client. It's like, yeah, well, maybe if you went on a walk and cleared your stress, you're not going to be so needy on your first client presentation. You know oh. what I mean? Like, that's what I'm trying to say here. Drop the mic. Done. <laughs> Done. Derek, I love it. I can just imagine you going through the city every day saying, hey, I'm walking here. <laughs> At least I hope you're doing that. No, no. Most people don't say, hey, I'm walking here. I'm, I usually just throw a bow out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Is your favorite show still Arrow? No, I got to tell you, man, I used to love Arrow, but Arrow really jumped the shark with how many different people they started to show on it. Yeah. Yeah. I went like season three. It really started to go downhill. Exactly. But Phoebe is shaking her head like, what are you doing? Off topic. Stay on topic. <laughs> but Listen, but, I, I fear but the I, Flash. Oh, my gosh. Right. So how good. How good is the Flash? So good. All right, I'm children. yelling at my TV screen, just being like, y'all getting clapped up. <laughs> yelling at the Flash, running in circles. I'm sitting there trying to run in circles. Never works, but I try. 
<laughs> I love the Flash. How are we supposed to go walking when you've got two seasons back to back of the Flash on Netflix? I mean, come on. Well, I'm up to date though, so I don't gotta watch those. <laughs> yeah. I, the only TV show I watch right now is The Flash. Yeah, I love it. I just finished season two. I'm up to date too. I mean, well, I don't know if they've started season three, but. That's another time. All right, Derek, listen, this was fantastic. Thank you for making the time. Thank you for putting this together. Yeah, man, that's it. Anything else? Hey, I'm pumped that I was here. Hopefully this is valuable. I know, like I said, I know it's different than the stuff that I usually talk about, but I'm all about talking about things that have helped me personally and walking has been one of those things. So if I can get at least five people to start walking a little bit more and it changes their life, you know what? This was a success. Yeah. I love it. Thank you so much, Derek Halpern. Make sure to go to jameswedmore.com forward slash walking so you can start your seven day walking challenge. Phoebe and I will be doing it. Derek will be doing it. And I know thousands of others, entrepreneurs and business owners will be doing it as well. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll see you on the next episode. Are you frustrated that no matter how hard you hustle, no matter how much you get done in a day, you still feel like you have little results to show for it? Do you feel like you're doing everything right, but there's still something missing? Well, what if there was an easier way? What if your business could be fun, effortless, and profitable? Phoebe and I have put together a free audio MP3 for you, compiling the 77 business affirmations for creating success from the inside out. And we wanna give it to you absolutely free. This is your chance to rewire your brain for bigger results in your life and your business. To get instant access absolutely free, simply visit 77affirmations.com. That's the number 77affirmations.com.